first I would like to thank this uh, TEDx team not only for inviting me here but including this particular subject for the discussion. I will direct one you know important incidents. We were excavating you know we as archaeologists we collect the data from the archaeological sites. The, the site can be defined as a place where we find the traces of human activities. And I am working in Haryana because Haryana has a lot of you know early farming or the Harappan sites very very rich. In 2011 I was excavating there in fact in the background you can see we had a special visitor the former prime minister's daughter professor Upinder Singh uh, being daughter of the prime minister number of you know you know security people the government officials you know accompanied her and I was showing you know the remains that we have excavated from the site nearly 5000 years old remains I was excavating and showing to her and to her students. She is a professor in Delhi University, professor of history. And in the background, some of the IS, IPS officers were murmuring. And they said, hey, what a waste of the you know, national wealth, because these people have come all the way from Pune and excavating, playing in the dust in a small village. And one very interesting comment, maybe all of you would like to listen to that comment that we excavate the, you know, the remains, all of us in fact, you know, personally we do that and naturally you know, we you know, remove the soil you know, with, with the help of brush and knife and try to recover the ancient remains. And the comment that was that perhaps these people did not get an opportunity to play in the dust when they were children, they are playing now. Now friends, we do not blame them because you know, it is our you know, responsibility to take the subject to the common people and make them understand the significance of this particular subject. All of you have heard about archaeology and history. We consider them as both in fact you know, the two sides of one and the same coin because both of them deal with ancient science or ancient society. The approaches are different. The historians mostly use the written records and in India even though we talk about maybe epics, Vedic literature etc. We have problems when we do not know how old this you know epics and the Vedic text is. But you know the real you know writing system starts in the country around 300 BC that may be around 2300 years ago and from there onward in Pandemi we consider you know the period as the historical period. Whereas we have in a very long history stretching back to almost 2 million that is 20 lakhs and for which there is no written records. So with the help of the you know remains that we collect, archaeologists for archaeologists the ancient remains are very important you know we collect them systematically, scientifically. And we use that data for writing history of the period for which there is no written records. So naturally you now we have been carrying out you know we collect the data through excavations and exploration we carry out survey in different parts of the country all over in fact you know the world archaeologists are doing the same you know same work. And then you know we select some sites for the excavation so that you know we generate the data and that data is used for writing history. The question is that you know what is the use of the subject? A lot of parents of our students come to us and say that you know why I was you know my child should study this particular subject. But there is something you know to learn from the subject. I am extremely happy to be in this uh, MNNIT campus. All of you are technicians, you are studying the technology. But let me tell you that the, the, the roots of the technology are going back to 5000 years at least or even more. 
In fact, you know, in the northwest part of the Indian subcontinent, we have discovered number of very important sites. Particularly, you know, you know from the time of the settled life, which goes back to 7000 BC, we have been introducing number of important basic technologies. And in the world, in fact, South Asia is very, very important. In the past, it was important because South Asia has given to the world number of important basic technologies and sciences. And also, you know, you will recall that, you know, we are the ones, in fact, who have given very important religions to the world. The Buddhism was born here, Jainism was born here, and, you know, we have had a very great philosophy which is very, very, very relevant. So, if you want to understand you know, how we have developed as a, you know, student of technology, what we are learning today, in fact, you know, is the Western knowledge system. The knowledge which was created there is, you know, important here and we teach. We don't try to understand the, you know, what are the indigenous technologies which are developed and how that, you know, what we call as the Indian knowledge system and how it can be integrated with the Western knowledge system and that will certainly generate, you know, completely new innovative ideas which you are trying to, you know, convey this to the society now. And there are a lot of, you know, important basic technologies and sciences which have been carried forward. India perhaps is on one of the few countries, maybe the other country, maybe China, where we connect ourselves to the past. I have been excavating the, the site of Rakhigiri, the, the biggest Harappan city. Mohenjo-daro is not the biggest Harappan city now. It is a site of Rakhigiri, which we are excavating. The roots of the Indian civilization, we think that, you know, the Harappans were these ones, in fact, who, who have introduced the Indian knowledge system and the roots of that is going back to almost now 6000 BC and we have been continuously progressing from 6000 BC to the modern times. So, we need to understand the journey in fact, how we have progressed over the period and what we you know learn from that. How many of you know that the Harappans were the best civil engineers? We have taught the world in fact the construction, scientific construction of civil engineers, engineering. Today, the same method is being used for the construction, scientific construction, what we call as the English bond. When the wall, in fact, this wall is constructed, wall of brick, one line is placed horizontal, the next line is placed vertical. Now, that is the method which is very often called as the English bond method. The earliest evidence of that goes back to the Harappan times. The Harappans were the ones who created, you know, those beautiful, you know, the bricks in proper ratio, rectangular in shape, and they started, you know, this very constructive, the very scientific construction method. The English people or the Europeans, in fact, you know, they came to know about this very, very late about the scientific method. So, we believe that, you know, it should be called as the Harappan bond rather than the English bond. That is, you know, that is what we feel. But this is again a very, very important contribution of the early cultures, early Indian culture. We boast of inheriting the Harappan tradition. Now, this is the, you know, photograph of the village of Rakhigadi very big village around 10,000 people living there. And when we move around, in when, you know, because when we, we are excavating there, we stay there for three to four months. And when we move around the village, we get the feeling that, you know, we are moving the, in the Harappan city or in the Harappan village. That many similarity, in fact, the houses, you know, the, the main street, the arrangement of the structures on both sides of the both sides of the street it's exactly same as the harappans the only thing that you know, we have we are not learning from the history 
in the village you can see that in the drainage line is paid in the in the street which was not the case during the harappan times and because of that people were very really very healthy this is our you can see this how the you know this is a picture taken in fact you know during the rainy season this is how the flash floods come to the rivers and probably you know this type of barricade small you know dams were created by the harappans on this and they have diverted the entire water inside the settlement they did not allow you know drop of water to escape from that stored each and every drop of water coming to these small streams and then of course you know within the set, you know city the city was very extensive you know spread over an area of almost 80 hectare which is a huge city city divided into three parts and in each part you can see that the harappans have dug underground water tanks one of the water tanks you can see here and there are water tanks in different parts of the settlement what is interesting here in fact because the harappan was the copper or the bronze civilization and in this particular you know in the background you are seeing a tank dug into solid rock and it is not possible without the presence of steel or the iron implements or chisels it is not possible to do that how the harappans must have do, done that that is a main big mystery for all of us but they introduced one very important traditional knowledge system which is being followed in that part and in many parts of the country if you have to dig you know in the solid rock like this then you know you choose the area for removing the blocks you make a drip grooves on the on that portion and then you put wooden pegs in them and keep pouring water the wooden pegs pegs start swelling and they start cracking the stone so you remove the cracked stone from from the debris and then with the help of the bronze or the maybe iron oh sorry copper chisels they must have smoothen the surface of the tanks so this how you now the harappans have done that and that traditional knowledge system has been passed on from generation to generation to the modern times so this is something you now which is very important to learn from the ancient cultures you can see here of course you now there are different you know sizes and shapes of the tanks and each and every tank was connected by underground water channel system you see the you know, evidence of the underground water channel excavated from the site the amount of water the volume of water that must have flowed through this was enormous and that is how you know in spite of the fact that this region falls in almost arid zone there is always dearth of water the harappans created that situation and they made sure that you know, there is always water flowing or running through the settlement this knowledge system which is which is very simple if you want to replicate that and put to use you don't need you know foreign collaboration you don't need lot of funding for this what you need in fact you know is apply this knowledge get the entire community involved in creating creating, creating this type of facilities in 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 this particular part between dolavira and the you know the nearest town to dolavira is around 110 10 kilometers that is called rapar and between the you know dolavira and rapar in 110 km area there are only four or five villages only people are not making or it's establishing habitations there because of the dearth of water because of the aridness of the region but if this particular method is applied this technique is adopted i am sure that in the entire kutch part will be a green green land so this is this would benefit the entire region and nation by the knowledge system if it is created it will certainly benefit the entire nation the agriculture system that was introduced by the harappans 5000 years ago is being followed without much modification in 
to even today. They are the ones in fact in the first in the world to introduce rotation of crop system, two crops in a year. That system was introduced by them around maybe 5000 years ago. And what you are seeing in fact in the picture, we have excavated the ploughed you know field dated to around 3000 BC. On one side you can see the you know, remains of ploughed field and the modern ploughed fields are exactly same. The arrangement of the you know furrow marks, you can see two you know furrow marks, you know, one is one furrow marks are very close to each other where in which the main crop can be, can be grown wheat or barley and there are furrow marks in fact you know, in other direction which are quite apart from each other in which secondary crop can be grown simultaneously and exactly same method is being followed even today in the northwest part of the country and even in the northern part of the country. So this is something you know which is relevant and you know we need to know about this and it needs to be put to use. We also have excavated, discovered Harappan, the you know replicas of the maybe agriculture implements. You know in this picture you can see the replica on the upper side and uh, the modern plowshares, modern you know implements are or agriculture implements are exactly same as the ancient ones, not much difference. So, you know, we are creating this you know, knowledge system. After 1950, you know, I have seen, in fact, I visited Hiroshima and Nagasaki and I have seen the destruction, in fact, you know, which was wrought by the Second World War. The entire country was almost damaged, completely destroyed. But within 15 years, Japan held Tokyo Olympics maybe in 1965 and there they showcase, you know, the the progress they have made in fact in science and technology. They became the world le leader in this particular field and the simple method they adopted was same as the method that was adopted by the Harappas. They imported raw materials from India, China and they produ pro processed them and exported the material to the finished goods to the same people. So we are trying to in fact you know, we when we undertake this you know, projects, we try to educate the common people and we know that you know these common people, unless you know you educate them, you will not really you know, they, you will not pass on the knowledge and uh, certainly you know these are the people who have to participate in preserving, conserving our you know heritage and if it is, if it is done that, that way, then perhaps you know we will be able to the, teach the next generation. So in short you know I wanted to convey this message to the young generation and they have to make sure that the knowledge is passed on from you to the you know common people and make sure that you know, they participate in preserving, conserving our ancient heritage which is very important from which we can learn a lot of things. Thank you very much. <laughs>